Master Reddit. Subscribe for more videos. DMD Dungeon Masters of Reddit. What is the most useless magical item you've ever given your party and how did they use it? We were playing through a pre-made campaign. At one point, the players retrieve a magical artifact, which turns out to be an orb of controlled dragons. It does exactly what you would expect. In theory, it could have been very useful, except no dragons were showing up in the campaign, so it was basically useless. It did, however, lead to a running gag where our most paranoid player kept attempting to control dragon random NPCs to see if they were secretly dragons in disguise. And so, as he had on occasions before, he took out his orb for a final once more. He spoke with the relic aloft in his hand. The innkeeper whispered. I'm at your command. Once my party got a huge beautiful magic sword which was improperly identified as a sort of ogre slaying. Instead, it was a cursed sort of ogre saying. Whoever wielded it would only be able to yell ogre. At things. Several adventures later they were attempting to catch a thief who was evading them. They came up with the brilliant idea of setting the sword as bait, and just going about their business. Sure enough, some time later they heard ogre ogre ogre. Ring out through the town and they caught him without consequence. Gave my party a sash of swimming, see, retextured aquatic cummerbund. They put it on the donkey pulling their wagon and promptly forgot about it. I haven't though. Two years later, I haven't. Ha ha. Still waiting on the moment that the donkey will be the only one to survive the flood? XD. Like a oh brother where art though? Moment. Seeing the donkey on a house, while everyone's barely clinging onto life via desk lamau. Edit. Context differs from memory. Edit. It was a cow, I was putting the donkey in because IT wasn't a cow. When one of my players found a magic ring in the wreckage of a burnt wagon he provisionally identified it as a ring of invulnerability. He spends most of the rest of the session swaying about like he's invincible until he is confronted by a veritable army of goblins. Combat immediately ensues and to his surprise he is quickly felled by javelins and scimitars. As he lays there bleeding out in the dirt he notices that the ring is completely undamaged. That is hilarious lol. Does the character survive though? Nope. That session ended with a TPK. Ouch. Yeah a combination of bandit ambush, a forest fire and some unlucky rolls during a swamp crossing meant that invulnerability guy was the only one to make it as far as the goblins for which he was grossly outnumbered and, to his dismay, under armored. I gave one of the characters a magical cloak that billows on command even if there's no wind. He used it to make dramatic entrances. Op said useless. This is a must have for any self-respecting adventurer. An orb that states the closest magical item to it. It always states itself. The list of lists of lists that don't contain themselves. Magic orb, oh tell me true dash what's the nearest thing like you? What, I wonder, might it be? So it told him, proudly. Me. I had a magical red rubber duck. Gave it to the party as a joke item because they kept asking for weird shit. Not one of them chose to identify it. It was an artifact level rubber duck. Once it was part of your inventory, it would never leave unless it wanted to. It had wisdom and intelligence of 28, sentience and could be attuned. Nobody learned that it was probably the most powerful item in my game. What was its function? If the party had known what it was, what could they have done with it? It was actually an old one that could grant anyone a wish spell with 100% accuracy, at the cost of two of the caster's level. Was playing a campaign on a tropical island type of place and an enemy knocked my weapon off a cliff so I used a coconut as an improvised weapon, crit with that thing four times in a row and decided to keep it for last hitting people. Was a barbarian and the DM liked the coconut last hitting so much he had me keep track of the kills and I eventually had a plus three coconut that on a crit would ricochet until it didn't kill something. So basically he gave me a coconut of great potential. Sorry that I didn't write this from a DM's perspective. A rope, that couldn't be tied. Not even for a second. They were facing a dragon, who loved puzzles and eating non-dragons. They gave him the rope and made the deal that if the dragon couldn't make a knot within an hour, then the dragon would need to let them pass through. Edit, just to clear something up. This didn't happen with the actual D&D rule book. It's just that the internet never asks for the entire pen and paper genre with these questions. The game was played using the DSA rulebook, with complete house rules for NPCs and basically every hard-coded game elements. To this day, the drain is on its back, playing with the rope like a cat playing with string, trying to get a knot in it. Ring of Fire Detection Range, Touch I had a merchant selling some knickknacks, and one of them was a ring of fire identification. 
If you pointed it at something it would declare in a loud, clear voice, fire, or not fire. Obviously useful when faced with illusory flames, but for some reason the party didn't spring for it. They found a one that creates a random and unique lock that incorporates itself into the substance it's used on. So it might make a suspicious recess in a stone wall or a brass plated keyhole on a wooden door. If probed with lock picks you would encounter moving tumblers or some other appropriate, but unique locking mechanism. The lock was still completely non-functional though. It didn't magically create a compartment, it just made a lock. Even if you used it on a desk drawer it never made a latch or bolt. So the drawer would open perfectly fine, while having a useless metal cylinder with tumblers that weren't connected to anything. If you successfully picked the lock, it always felt like a real lock despite lacking the physical pieces, it would make a soft chiming noise and the lock would evaporate. The wand was a training tool used by a famous locksmith to challenge himself and his students. It had no practical application at all outside of that profession. It ended up being used by the druid, who had ranks in use magic device, don't ask, to constantly mess with the rogue. The druid would take every opportunity to wild shape into a small critter good for scouting and then place fake locks anywhere the rogue might conceivably try to use the search skill. The rogue's increasing paranoia whenever he found a lock and his overblown promises of vengeance every time a random hole in a floorboard wasted a minute of his time and chimed at him was a pretty good gag. It turned a little sour when the druid made an extra lock on an honest to goodness treasure chest. The rogue rolled a natural 20 to pick the first lock and got a chiming noise. Then he rolled a 3 and triggered an energy draining trap that permanently lost him 5 horsepower. After that the rogue stole everyone the druid had in the middle of the night and threw them all into a bottomless pit in the underdark. Not D&D Dungeon Master but I played Naroshima, this is post-apocalyptic RPG system, Fallout slash Mad Max Climates. One guy was so fucking stubborn searching one abandoned building that I finally gave him a potato. Motherfucker carved it for the shape of hand grenade and painted green etc. Then he used it in negotiation with some NPCs, pretending that he was insane and bluffing that he's gonna blow them all up with himself. Well I was really impressed and proud of the creativeness of this player. That's the kind of player that makes the game fun to play xd we once had a player who really wanted to be evil, so he made a pact with an evil demigod and basically became our biggest enemy. He had a flying carpet and a magic fishnet of which I'm not quite sure what was even magic about it. He was the most dangerous enemy we've ever had. Once had my party a magic spoon. It emitted a terrible aura of dark illusion magic and merely holding it filled layers with a sense of dread from its sheer chaotic energy. Its in-game abilities, it worked like a fork instead of a spoon. Plus 3 sort of Edward Tumbleton slang. Edward Tumbleton was a tailor in a nearby city. They discovered a sword that was very effective at killing him, just him. Neither the party, nor any other person on the planet had any reason to kill the guy. The party ended up killing him by blowing up his shop with a fireball. The sword was never used. Poor Edward Tumbleton. I think at some point, he got on the bad side of an artificer who told him, I have a sword with your name on it and it turned out to be true. The plot, as I recall, involved an insane artificer who discovered a new, inexpensive way to create magic items with no control over their effects. In a game I am in currently our DM gave us a flask of endless water. It can produce water in a trickle, a flood, or deluge that shoots 30 gallons of water in one turn. Our cleric has just fallen from a bridge over a chasm, and through clever bullshitting our sorcerer has managed to catch the fallen cleric with a web spell. As we are all racking our brains to figure out a way to save them, our cleric pulls out the flask and uses the water cannon mode to propel herself back onto the bridge using the web strands as a fulcrum. Goddamn nerds! You think that's bad? I had to literally ban the 3.5 spell create water because my entire party rolled classes that could learn it, the default is cleric slash druid, but there's books that award it to arcane casters, too, and solved everything with a stupid cantrip. It would blow your mind how many puzzles, traps, combat encounters, and social situations can be solved by liberal application of magic water. Someone refuses to talk? Waterboard them. Pressure plates might be down this hallway? Set them off from a distance with a flood. There's a locked anything? Break it by dropping water from a height. Ambushed? Turn the road to mud, and run away. Setting an ambush? Turn the road to mud, and wait. Starving? You can survive for 10 days on just water. Need to escape from a conversation? A pipe bursts, and the building floods. The list goes on. Turns out physicists and engineers can turn a cantrip into the power equivalent of a 9th level spell, given enough thought. Not a DM, but a player with cheeky DMs. 
The rock of gravity detection. It's literally just a stone you hold up and let go of. If it falls, congratulations, you've detected gravity. My infamous horn of resounding quacks was a hit, summoned any duck within a half mile radius of the person using it. The party never went hungry after that. Edit, for clarification, it was indeed a call to any and all ducks within a half mile radius, but it wasn't a matter of instant teleportation. The ducks have to travel, but do so willingly, answering the call of the horn. I gave one of my players a delicious magical sandwich that regenerated itself each day as long as you didn't eat the crust. It didn't offer any benefits when you ate it, it was just an infinite sandwich. That sandwich became a character in and of itself. The amount of time that was spent talking about the sandwich, its contents, the flavor, etc. was crazy. Every player described how their character would ogle the sandwich whenever it was brought out. That character is gone for now but she kept that sandwich right up until retirement. She spends her time in Candle Keep Library, devouring knowledge and also the sandwich, wait. As long as you don't eat the crust. What if you cut it in half and separated the two halves? Would each half regenerate a whole sandwich as long as there were no bites taken out of it? Edit, spelling. It's the deep philosophical questions like this that keep me coming back to Reddit. Not me as a DM, but early in 3e e days my friend's older brother was DMing a game for my friends, my sister and me. One of the items we got was rolled on the random table was a gust of wind fan. It was exactly what it sounds like. Wave it, creates a powerful enough gust of wind to propel a boat and possibly rips itself to tatters. Threw it in the pack and forgot about it. A few sessions later we're defending a town from waves of invaders. The final boss is a cyclops or an Eden or something. Big bruiser, we see it approaching with enough time to prepare for its arrival. My sister asks us to all use our healing potions then give her the glass vials, which we do. Then she turns to the DM and calmly explains how she takes the vials with her up a guard tower. She smashes and grinds them up, waits for an opportune time, then uses the fan to blow a gust of powdered glass particles into the Eden's eyes. The look on this man's face. A cross between holy shit that's awesome I'm so happy a story like this is in my campaign world now and fuck, this boss was supposed to be difficult. We were playing a campaign with custom items we all put in they were reasonable, and someone put in a staff that whenever someone used it, it turned the user into a potato, they could still move and turn themselves back but that was about it. So we were in a dungeon that was rather small, our 6 feet barbarian was angry that he had a debuff, but there was a small slit in the wall that I hid an item behind and our magic man went puff and rolled into the slit and got a key for a chest at the end of the dungeon. So yeah. Edit, why is potato rake the joke you guys came up with? because it's the exact same joke that my friend made when we put the item in the game. He turned himself into a potato, funniest shit I've ever seen. My group had a habit of giving items that sounded very useful but were the complete opposite. For example our wizard was gifted a wand of fireball. As you'd expect he was extremely disappointed when in the middle of combat he used the wand and fireball by Pitbull started playing mid-fight. One of my favorite gag items was a ring of teleportation. Every time you attempted to use it the ring would teleport to the destination of your choosing, just not with you. Worst time to figure that out was when I, the rogue, was cornered and alone, fighting three wolves, which at level 2 was not fun. Edit, the first time it was used it teleported to the inn we had been staying at. And when we got back apparently it had been taken. So we never got to use it as a weapon and teleport it into anyone's brains. Not while I was DMing but my favorite useless magic item to this day is the boots of Quickstep. Once per turn, you may click your heels as an action. To gain an action. It resulted in my character beginning each of his turns clicking his heels. It was marvelous. My groups have a tradition of gifting players useless magic items with a birthday theme on their their IRL birthday. Two of the favorites that I bestowed so far include a pair of boots that drop streamers everywhere he walked and a ring that turned the wearer's poop into chocolate cake, which could be eaten to regain one horsepower. So a friend told me a story of his one time that fits the bill, I think. At some point in a homebrew game, the party gets their hands on a wand of magic farts. Point and fart, literally. They used it to sneak around quite effectively, for a while. Then they had to deal with a cult with a secret mountain hideout. Traveled through a cave system until they reached the Andy chamber with four lit braziers around the altar. My friend, a wizard, uses the wand until he rolls a one. The wand then springs a leak, spraying methane and slowly filling the chamber. Everyone bolts out as the wizard runs around the room before chucking the wand at the altar and following suit. They get out just in time to seal the entrance and blow off the top of the mountain, literally. 
they were blinded and deafened for 3 turns each. One of my one shot campaigns had all players at 8th level so I wanted to give them magical items but not too op. So one of my monk players wanted a decanter of endless water, so I changed it to a homebrew version, where it didn't do the stream, fountain or geyser things but instead it would pour endless alcoholic beverages. He could make the decanter fill with mojitos or margaritas or a Heineken, whatever but only to get drunk. I thought it was harmless and fine, until I realized he selected the way of the drunken master and got drunk on command anywhere and everywhere. It was quite fun. I'm writing a new one shot and I might take some ideas from this post too. A DM once gave our party a mortar and pestle that let us grind out spices in fairly large quantities. We were supposed to use it as a hook to get involved with an army, it would have let the cooks keep the soldiers happy and put us in the good graces of a local lord. Instead we wound up completely abandoning the quest line, setting up a spice shop and went into business. It was supposed to be a one-off adventure, but we had a great DM and it turned into the best long-term campaign I've ever played. It had court intrigue assassination attempts, war, curses, everything you could want. It ended when we all went our separate ways at the end of high school, with one of my business partners, Human, dying of old age, another, Elvin, selling his shares of the business to the dead one's heirs to retire and my gnome faking his own death and leaving town to avoid a jealous husband, literally riding off into the sunset on a flying merchant ship. Obligatory not the DM. But our party's DM gave us a magical, mysterious bag. When we opened it, we pulled out a turtle. We reach in again. Thinking there must be something else to this bag. We pull out a rabbit. Still thinking there must be something else, something more meaningful to this item, we reach in again. And pull out a 9 feet tall deer. It really was just a backpack that lets you pull out random animals. My bard proceeds to use speak with animals, then charms the deer to let us ride him. We named him Preston, and he's been our ridiculously massive means of transportation ever since. Not completely useless, but a weird chain of effects nonetheless. So this is Pathfinder. I joined the campaign in progress as a dwarven ranger with a hit list and the social skills of a block of wood. The party included a halfing rogue whose impromptu resurrection made him an unwilling tool of Sauron Ray, a paladin of Sauron Ray with a penchant for moral loopholes, an impulsive sorcerer who is probably the best example of chaotic neutral I've ever seen. When I say he's CN, I mean it. At one point he attempted to recruit a band of adventurers to help us fight an army of demons. He immediately gave a rousing speech at the local tavern establishment of the drunken god, leading to a chain of events that ended with a riot, two sunken ships, and an accidental guard kidnapping. So anyway, long story short, we are out in the wilderness hunting down his long lost father who is being dragged through the wilderness by a dull hand servant of the Dark Lord who is using some bad mojo to bring back undead dragons. I track the Dullahan and we sneak up on the camp in the middle of this freezing cold wilderness. We start prepping ourselves and Ned, the CN sorcerer, pulls out the mask of the skull. For the uninitiated, it's skull mask that can fly off and eat an enemy's face. A Dullahan, on the other hand, has no actual head, instead relying on stolen heads strapped to his chest. The table all groan at the mere mention of the mask. People exasperatedly tell him not to use the mask. He ignores them and puts it on. Rowan. Our less than moral paladin finally pipes up. You know what? Fuck it. I use detect evil. Silence. The DM and Ned exchange looks, then he gently shuts his DM book, folds his hands, and takes a breath. You detect evil. We all stop confused. Uh, what? Ned throws his hands up, look, guys I can explain. You remember that staff that we found a few weeks into the campaign that was hungry for blood and I kept feeding it? Okay. So it turns out that was a ritual to switch places with the being imprisoned inside. My name is actually Elfast. I'm a thousand year old elf sorcerer who was imprisoned by the Dark Lord before his turn to evil. My imprisonment has driven me quite evil. Chaos ensues. Rowan is trying to find a way to not kill him and still keep his oath. Nyx, the rogue, is nervously picking at one of her many daggers, and I'm standing there with my magic, automatic crossbow and giant wolf trying to figure out what the hell is going on. As it turns out, I never actually met Ned. The entire time we were adventuring together, Ned was trapped in the staff. It was an awkward introduction after everything was sorted out, and now Ned and Ilfast tend to swap places randomly while forgetting to tell us, though both are so chaotic it's pretty hard for us to tell. So yeah, the item wasn't exactly useless and we were all much too powerful to need it, but its use directly led to a revelation that completely changed the story that we had been adventuring through for the past few weeks. They haven't figured out how to use it yet, 
but I gave my party a jar of kraken bait, full of rancid fish magically enchanted to attract a giant octopus when thrown in the water. The only problem? The jar is also cursed, and whoever possesses the jar loses the ability to open any door or containers that require any sort of twisting motion. They can't open it. This is what you get for seriously considering buying the ring that turns you into a were crocodile and giving the DMA how the fuck do I balance this heart attack. And the best part? They never stop to ask if the jar is even a twist top. It's not. They just assumed they couldn't open it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and comment below letting me know. It helps the channel and lets me create more content just like this. If you do like this type of content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload.